Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Annie Chang, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. There's an example of an actress, for, a good actress from a good show. You're not going to get the, any more of that today. <laughs> not at I, all, sir. No. All right, it's that time again, kids. She's a little bit salty. He's a whole lot of petty, and together we are the Salty and Petty Podcast. That's right. That salty love that I'm Petty Phil. At least I have the alliteration. All right, so yes. Well, I just couldn't use my real name, Sarah. That's for Ray. It's a joke. Okay, Stephanie. <laughs> All right, so me, us, me and Sally are going to be talking some of the worst TV shows of 2023 so far. So much to choose from. As Ray's head explodes, he's like, wait a minute, they're saying a lot of S, S, S names. Is her real name start with S? <laughs> All right, Sheila. All right. Don't call me Sheila. He's like, Sheila. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, Sheila. All right, what shows do you want to talk about? <laughs> um, so we're, uh, we're doing worst TV shows. Um. I got a little bit of a list. I mean, I haven't really seen anything that great this year, to just be totally honest with you. What, nothing that's been that good, you're saying? Yeah, so... So anything, anything's fair game at this point, you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen maybe like four shows. I mean, like new shows. I'm, I'm only yeah. going to talk about new shows that started in 2023. Um, For now, I guess. So... Uh, I'll just go down the list as the year started, and however your list is in order, feel free. Um, I'll start with Kaleidoscope from Netflix. That show that you can watch in any order, it was kind of disappointing. Huh. Cool concept, uh, really beautifully shot. Um, just the way that it ended, it was super predictable. Huh. Really? And, I, and it's it's a waste of uh, Giancarlo, honestly. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I you have this vehicle, and they kind of blew it. He gave well, a great performance, but everything else around him was just kind of meh. You know, Giancarlo uh, Esposito from probably most likely you guys remember from like Breaking Bad, Do the Right Thing, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they had like too many flashbacks, or they were like trying to make him young too, and it just it, it, oh, it weird. one of those. You didn't see yeah. this one? Everybody was talking about it at the beginning of the year. So I heard of it. I I mean, I didn't see it or anything, but. Like I said, cool, cool concept, beautifully shot, but super predictable and uh, unsatisfying ending. So hmm. you actually technically really couldn't watch in any order because there's like one episode you absolutely had to start with. So technically it wasn't true <laughs> from the beginning. So just saying, not to be you know pedantic or anything. So they lied. Well, it's Netflix, of course they lied. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, you got, you know you got you're gonna have problems if you know you have something with Giancarlo Esposito, which is like, yeah, it's okay, or eh, it's got problems. Yeah, like I, I came for him, I stayed for him. Hell, um, oh, <laughs> but everybody else involved it was just like they were all like nobodies, pretty much. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. I mean, I, all right, I'll do like you did. My list isn't that long. I don't have a lot, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say the worst show of the year, but like one that I found kind of disappointing was um, Night Court, the new one. Yeah, I can understand that. Like it, it's it's it doesn't it's not as funny as the original. I mean, I'm sorry, I sound like if I sound like an old man, but it's like I sit through these the new episodes and I'm just like I'm not really. La laughing i'm sorry i'm not like you know or just like I, I, you know it's just i was like uh -huh. it was like uh -huh, uh, that's humorous uh -huh. yeah. i mean do you i mean do you feel the same way i was just like yeah i, I mean and, and i love the, the the act 
actress and everything, and it was oh. cool that she was Harry's daughter, but that's as far as it goes. And, you know, John Larroquette is done. I know. I'm like, you have to, I just feel like they're wasting John Larroquette. I'm just totally. like. Totally. Like, I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's just kind of like Night Court in name. Like, they, it's just weird. It's Pretty like much. It, choice. And it's just so weird because, like, now Dan's the defense instead of the prosecutor. And I know he, you know, they have a married, they, he got married at a certain point and he was, you know, before he was a womanizer. I'm just like. Character growth, but character growth we hate. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, the, the wife passed away. Why don't we have him give back to being a womanizer? So, you know. No, because nobody wants to date in 2022. <laughs> to be fair, it's a nightmare out there. I mean, isn't isn't that one like a, a uh, I mean, are we getting away from that? But I mean, isn't that always like a tried and true comedic trope where it's like, oh, you know, the, the horny old person, you know? Yeah, I think that kind of died with um, Barney Stinson and How I Met Your Mother. I think we've mm. evolved past that as a society, thank goodness. But, yeah, it's just it's something missing out of the formula, and I can't quite put my finger on it. It's okay if you've never watched Night Court. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, once a but I mean, but, uh, besides John Larroquette, everyone's brand new, so that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, like you said, it's pretty much just Night Court name because we only have one of the original cast members. So the, the chemistry is going to be different, and it's just I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've, I there was like one joke or like one theme where I was just like, oh yeah, that's so hilarious. You know, it's just I was just like, oh okay, this is cute. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I wanted to like it, but. Yeah, and I'm just sad, like I, as I mentioned, it's not like this. My list is not like in order of like absolute worst to like less offensive. It's just how they uh, premiered <laughs> in, in chronological order. But I think this might be in the running for literally the worst TV show of the year. It's Velma. As your resident Scooby Doo, oh, I, I hated this. I movie. saw so much. Uh, so it many. It was rightly deserved, movie. and it, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that. Uh, Mindy Kaling decided to make Velma um, Indian. It had mm. nothing to do with that. No, no. Poops on the viewer. If you're a Scooby Doo fan, there's nothing here for you. Yeah, was it was it Shaggy who was a drug dealer or something? Or he, mm, I mean, not really. But okay, again, I, I, but all they I made, like the, the character design is terrible. They made Shaggy black. Like no black person ever asked for Shaggy to be black. Like we, we, we were thrown out of left field on that one too. We we're just like, this is there's no Scooby. Um, like, what are you doing, babes? Like, it, and it just, it just poops on the viewer every single chance it gets. It's like meta commentary about Mindy Kaling being Mindy Kaling. And I don't care about Mindy Kaling being Mindy Kaling. If I wanted that, I'd watch the Mindy Kaling Project or whatever the hell her show was. Like, I can't believe they gave the rights to, to this lady, like, who just clearly doesn't know huh. what Scooby-Doo is about. Like, it's annoying. And it, 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 it's bad and it should feel bad. And, you know, I'm not usually for sending hate on the internet, but no, it was deserved. It was deserved. One I mean, is it, is it one of those things where it's basically like, you know, they they try to reinvent Scooby Doo? She's what, an like, edgelord and she's too old to be an edgelord. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. But I mean, we try to reinvent it like every decade and it's, you know, hey, the... Scooby Doo does not need reinvention. It needs modernization. And that is it. And it's such a shame because yeah. like, it came out right after like the um the fan project that did like the like what if Scooby Doo was Riverdale, which was actually really mm. freaking good. And I'm like, why can't you guys just pick that up instead instead of giving us this? It was just I I'm not here for it. And again, I mean, if you, yeah, if it. If... If she had written something different, I mean, Mindy Kaling had such like what goodwill from like The Office and her own show, and it's just like you know, it's just... yeah. And she did this, and it's like I hope you never work in this town again. Lady. I, I well, I think she killed any goodwill she had. So uh, you know, if she ever comes back something else, she's gonna have to prove or reprove herself. Yeah. Wasn't B.J. Novak in there telling you no? <laughs> exactly. What's your next pick? Um, like I said, my list wasn't long. I mean, probably my biggest disappointment of the year, which I knew was going to disappoint me, was Gotham Knights. Oh, that's that's in my tie for worst TV show of the year. I mean, that's, that's probably that, that's probably my bit my biggest. You know, I I hated it. I mean, again, it it we're just stuck in this trope of let's do a Batman show without Batman. And again, I think uh, we've discussed this before, even in that 
genre. I think it's the worst. Yeah, birds I mean, of, at birds first of, it was Birds of Prey. Now it's like Birds of Prey looks like freaking Shakespeare. Okay? Yeah, bir Birds of Prey and Gotham. I mean, they all they all look uh, like masterpieces compared to this. Well, they all, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what they were thinking. But, yeah, and, so and, how can you use the Gotham Knights name and not at least use the actual premise? And again, you have 50 Robins, but we're, we're, we're creating a whole brand new, you know, orphan that Bruce Wayne adopted who had no idea he was Batman until he died. Yeah. And the Court of Owls can kill Batman, but these plucky young teenagers can. Uh... I stopped watching. Look, I stopped watching it. I, I stopped putting myself to the torture. I think it was the, at least the last two episodes. I was like, yeah, no. Good. I'm not He's watching. Learning. Yeah, just don't watch it. I mean, just it's pretty bad, kids. Energy. When anything even tangentially connected to Batman, and I'm not touching it, I you and know, it's a flop. Yeah, like, sure, Batwoman. Like they, like, you know, they 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 struggled, but it was it had a lot to do with you know how yeah. the first. I struggled through. I struggled, but I watched every episode of Batwoman. No, Gotham Knights. No. Good for you, buddy. And they canceled it. Uh, thank God. I love oh, when that's they no shock. I, 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 is it just that it's not getting the season one or they're not airing the rest of the episodes like what no they i i think they, they i think they uh, again i stopped watching it, but i think they aired the full season one but it's just like they're not, they're not picking it up okay yeah we all knew that from the podcast. yeah yeah I, oh i love it. it was so cute when they were you know they were like oh we can only renew one show it's gonna be superman and lois or gotham knights i'm like even the whole, even the the internet. Well, Gotham Knights was cheaper to make, but um, it's not gonna have ratings. So you know, no. <laughs> hmm. Let's think. Let's see this thing that's been uh, proven uh, for the last, you know, three three seasons, or this thing that people have been crap crapping on before it even aired. Hmm. I don't know. I, I knew I knew it was gonna be a train wreck when the uh, creators of the Batman Gotham Knights video game were like. On social media, the minute the show was announced, they're like, No, 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 this ain't us. No, no, no. Our game is completely different now. Yeah. Um, so my next pick is uh from the reality TV genre. It's something that I don't watch too often, but the title of it piqued my interest, and um it was worse than I even I thought. The bar was in hell. It's called MILF Manor. And if you don't know, oh, I've seen commercials. Yes, a lady admits to her son on national television that she banged his best friend, and he's like oh. basically suicidal over this. Like, oh. no, no lie, you see just the spiral that he's going through, and he stays at the man like, it, the sh and it's on TLC, the Lying Channel. It's not the Learning Channel; it's the Lying Channel. What is educational about Milf Manor? I'll wait. It's crazy. The premise is crazy and stupid. Eight single women between the ages of 40 and 60 live in Mexico Villa and they pursue romantic relationships with the single men. But the twist is they're the ladies' sons. Like, what the hell is going on in America that this is okay? Older, older women going after younger men in Mexico. A2, love how far? I don't have kids and I'm not, I would that, never date my kids' friends. That's true. That's true. That's sick and twisted. Like, I don't even, and I mean, they get all, all, I don't on watch that category on Cornhub. On and national TV, yeah. On national yeah. TV. And let me tell you, kids, I mean, imagine how bad this is. I mean, as a former teenage boy, I mean, all the friends are going to be mocking you. Now the whole internet's going to be mocking you. It's just like, basically, yeah, hey, I feel so I, bad for that kid. Like, gonna bang your mom? <laughs> yeah, like, it just wasn't very well thought out. Like, I, I can't believe the spot. But, you know, and I think about why, like, literally, like, I think Survivor's the only, like, real that and like real world like the only two like reality tv shows quote unquote reality tv shows that I, like, i've ever really watched because all of the, all the other premises are wild like you, do you remember like in the early 2000s it was like uh, the swan where people were doing like plastic surgery to change their whole stuff and we were applauding this or oh, the biggest yeah. loser like what is wrong with us like america's got talent and like well american idol and like the bad like like it's just it's weird it's weird again it's like it's I've like never gotten into it people stop watching this stuff it's like but this is gonna get worse because of the writer strike this is what happened yes. the last time we had a writer strike reality tv boomed and it yeah. has not slowed down since and it is gonna be a million times worse. and like milf manor they allowed it to air i think it's getting a season two like we have to we have to stop we have to support our real writers like stop we stop, have to stop this watching. is where i draw the line in the sand stop watching this this like, people i mean that's the easiest way to get rid of this stuff and it's like let's let's somebody is definitely watching it 
though. Let's let's stop. I know that's the it's sad no thing. You like what you like, but like seriously, like reality. Please don't watch the new reality TV show stuff that comes out because that's just gonna extend the writer strike. Because that's that's literally what happened last time and the time before that. Um, and I, I just I can't. Let let's stop rewarding people airing their tragedies and garbage on on TV. You know, for a buck, and you know these people ain't even making that much. Guys, can we can we finally finally put a stake in the heart of Jersey Shore, please? Yeah, good please. luck. Bud. Good luck. They're old. They're old now. Let's get you know. Not well, to... Bama Shore didn't work out, so they had to go back to the original. Oh movie. yeah. Oh, oh god. Or you know, here's a novel thought. I mean, I know YouTube exists, but like, maybe make some music oriented TV shows. Live up to your title. Yeah, let's do the behind the scenes of a making of some some of these albums yeah! or something. Yes, let's do trivia pop up video music videos or something like we used to. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess they. I guess they let's feel. Let's do like... headbangers bot. Like, come on, something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you might not be getting the younger people, but I mean, all the 30, 30s and or above. Just interview some, something music related because this is the same or this is reality stuff on MTV. I mean, ridiculousness is on it. Yeah, I mean, if you what, can make, 22 hours out of it, you're telling me you're telling me the, the kids won't be here for like a Taylor Swift interview and stuff, and, you know, a little live. Con- I mean, the Tiny Desk concerts have been like going bananas. Like, why are you guys, why, why are you not doing that? <laughs> get the biggest names and interview them which I, they'll probably do because they want uh to promote their shows and stuff and you know their concerts tours and stuff yeah it's yeah i saw that like half of the first episode and i just, i couldn't believe it i thought it was a joke <laughs> I, I know like, i heard be real. i heard the premise i thought it was a joke but no no it's real yeah i i could not believe it um do you have any other picks? Because I, I have I, my list isn't that long, but it's it's probably more than yours. I mean, you could go through the list. Yeah, I mean, my only thing it didn't start in twenty twenty three, but we're finally ending the damn thing. Fear the Walking Dead. Oh. That thing never knew what it what it wanted to be because, like, the first season, it was like, oh, well, this thing it kind of starts in the beginning of the pan, you know, the uh, zombie apocalypse before Walking Dead starts, and then there's time jumps and it's just like cast members like disappearing for seasons at a time and it's like are they dead or alive and them coming back i mean by season four they had to bring in uh lenny james's morgan and stuff oh because he hiked across the country to get on that show (laughs) yeah i i can never get into the the walking dead tv universe it's like i'm sorry the the comic books are just superior with the exception of, you know, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, I'm going to probably jump into that, obviously. Which oh, yeah. I premiered, mean, are, right? are we going to, what, Dead City? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on, it, it, I think they've done, was it three episodes so far? Yeah, yeah I was it's waiting a, for it to end so I could binge it all. It, well, it's only six, so they're already halfway yeah. through. So, yeah, because I was going to say, are we going to do an episode on that? Cause, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for the finale, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, because there's only, like I said, I think there's only six episodes, so. Yeah, put that on the calendar for they're sure. They're already, like, halfway done with it, so. Um, so Milk Manor, that 90s show, as much as I love the characters of Kitty and Red, the new characters just really didn't ignite anything for me. I was really hopeful for this show. It just, it, they don't understand the 90s. I don't think these people that wrote it were actually 90s kids. That's the problem. They they didn't, they didn't get it. And again, something like that is hard too, Hale. Uh, where, where it's like you're trying to like stick to this uh, the original formula of that '70s show, but it's like, well, you know, it's a different decade. It's these people's kids and stuff, and it's just like stuff has to change. But it's like, what do you change? And what do you like keep the same? During the summer, like you know, it's like yeah. A I felt like the cast didn't really have good chemistry because that's what sold that '70s show. Like, I mean, you know. I, like I said, I'm a 90s kid and I love that 70s show. And it wasn't because it was like, like I know people who probably said the same thing about that 70s show that were like born in the 70s. It's like, it's vaguely familiar, but it's not like super specific and like accurate. Yeah. And I kind of get, I kind of get the criticism, but I watched it because the cast was really cool together and the cast just didn't have that. Hmm. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I was looking at the list of stuff I've been watching. I mean, I, I, I like what I like and I'm not like, watching a ton of you know if i don't I'm like try- it like i literally stopped
stopped watching like a lot of TV in 2014. Like I was watching like the Arrowverse and like procedurals because that's just it's easy. You can miss an episode. It's fine. Like, yeah. I haven't really gotten like like I binge like old stuff all the time, all the time. So oh yeah, like, that's all a... the old stuff like Breaking Bad. I was I've been doing uh, the Vampire Diary stuff like that. Um, I just haven't really been into new stuff, and so I've been trying to give new stuff a chance. So I'll, I'll give something like a one or two episodes. Um, I found Poker Face, which is an absolutely fantastic TV show, and it comes from Peacock of all places. Um, and that's probably like the only new show that's like that I've watched this year that's like good. <laughs> and if you want little Hellfire's takes on this, uh, her and Moz Manzora are finishing that up on full stream ahead. Yes, thank you for the plug, sweetie. Um, what else? Um, I watched Wolf Pack. I'm a huge Team Wolf fan. You guys may or may not know that. Yeah. Um, but it's not actually like it's by Jeff Davis who did um Criminal Minds and Teen Wolf, but it's based on a book called Wolf Pack, which I had read by uh Ido von Bochum. And so, but like it and it stars Sarah Michelle Gellar. That's the show that stars Sarah Michelle Gellar mm-hmm. on Paramount Plus. Um and so, like, a lot of people, like, came into it thinking it was going to be Teen Wolf, but I came in thinking it was going to be more like the book, and there, he's, like, kind of threading the needle, he's kind of, like, bringing it back in old characters, and it's like, after that Teen Wolf movie, babes, like, no, 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 we, we don't, I'm done with Teen Wolf universe. This well, if it, be its own thing. Well, if people are fans of hers from Buffy, or would they enjoy this show? No. No. It, well, Jeff Davis has a, like, sometimes he has a, re- he has really great ideas, but he doesn't know how to execute them, so a lot of things fall super flat. And it's just like I'd hmm. rather have had Ringers renewed than watch. If if you know about Sarah Michelle Gellar's career and you know about the CW, you know about Ringers. I'd ra- I'd rather have Ringer back than watch this. Like it's so unfortunate. And I was just super interested that she chose another supernatural show. I thought she said she wasn't ever going to do that again. So, hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I hope it does well just for the sake of it being Sarah Michelle Gellar. Um, but I don't think I'll be. I'm just waiting for the next book in the series. <laughs> I don't think I'll be watching that show. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, we gotta do some kind of Law and Order episode soon because uh, I, I, how I swear there's like 20 different channels that play old law, you know, the original Law and Order series. So. Oh yeah. Because I, um, I mean, it, I, it, I have a lot of them on D. I know I have all of SVU um on Blu-ray. Yeah. I just haven't um. Because, I mean, it's probably a good investment for these channels. I mean, if you get it for a good price, you're getting, like, 20 seasons of something. So it's like you're not repeating the same five episodes, you know, Yeah, every couple weeks. Linear TV is not going to be a thing for too much longer, I don't think. I think the writing is on the wall. And that that's going to be bad because that's going to uh, enable streaming to just go banana. I mean, you're already paying technically the price of ca- like, uh, a yeah. cable with all the sh- – if you have all of the streaming services. Yeah. So it's like, ugh. but that's the way to get your package deal. Like, if you only want a few of them or something, but it's like, but they've spread it out. Like, it makes yeah. it impossible. Oh, yeah. Cause, you know, this one gets this show, this one gets this well, show. If you want yeah. The office, you better have Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, tiny dick? <laughs> Whoa. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, where was I? That 90s show, that wolf pack. Ah, uh, that brings me to, like, also, I think this might be a three-way tie between uh, Velma and um, Gotham Knights, The Ark, which is a sci-fi show, and it premiered next day on Peacock Plus. Hmm. Um, which I don't know if I even show. heard of it. Yeah, it's about, uh, so, it's about Earth can't sustain human life, so this billionaire uh... companies create spaceships, and they all go off into space, and it's only, like, two arcs left, and all the tension, you know, the human race surviving, and yeah, it's a terrible show. It's terrible. But I can't oh. look away. I watched every single episode. Right? The actors are rough, and it, it just... Nah, it's a train wreck, okay. It's a train wreck you can't look away from. Plus, like, I like to support sci-fi, right? Because... Yeah. You know, you gotta keep you gotta keep the genre alive, and you know, it's, it's nothing like a little drama in space. I mean, it's no it's no Star Trek, but um, it, it has some interesting things going about it but it's just executed so bad it's just such a train wreck i can't look away it is my guilty pleasure if you will <laughs> but it's terrible <laughs> the writing the set is actually the set design is actually surprisingly nice for a sci-fi budget type show hmm. a sci-fi channel show that's set in space like it's it looks nice but the acting is terrible <laughs> it's so terrible 
And I don't know if it's meant to be camp. I don't think. I think everybody's playing it pretty straight laced, but it comes off camp as hell. And another one, you know, you know, it's funny. It's I wouldn't say it's the one of the worst TV shows. And it, like it didn't start this this year, but its last season was this year. It's so funny because it's like uh, Titans. Yeah, like it'll start. What the hell happened to that? Like it'll it'll start okay, but then like they take a weird they weird directions with writing. It's like, oh hey, Dick Grayson's gonna get himself thrown in prison on purpose. You know, it's bad when Kristen's even like, yeah, I'm ready for this show to be done. And Dick Grayson's yeah. on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just the weird the directions they take the show. And it's like, oh hey, let's kill off Don and Troy with an electric wire. Oh yeah, I always I always go into the season thinking, yeah, this is gonna be the season I watch every episode, and nope. <laughs> and, they, and they take and then they take a we, they they take a weird turn somewhere in the season. Yeah, every time I think this is gonna be the season. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think the, I I think the the last se- this current last season was the, the was the best executed out of all of them, but that bar is not high. Yeah, I, and again, the cast. The, I thought the cast was great. I thought it was perfectly cast, but just the material they gave them was just sometimes just. Mm. Yeah, I totally get that. A show that nobody asks for, it, but it, like, like it's like literally like two, like 20, 30 years too late. True Lies. It's like babes, babes. Nobody's gonna do it like James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Fuck you. What are you doing? I mean, is that? And it's CBS. And I was, was gonna like, say, baby, what are you? No. Is, is that is that like here. is that like CBS's new thing where it's like, oh hey, what was a big movie thirty years ago? Let's make a let's make the a series out of that. By now. I, I mean, mean, I always wanted to see. I always wanted like a part two, and it just never happened because James Cameron got too sucked into the Titanic shit. But <laughs> I mean, CBS, you don't want to be known as the old people's network. Well, no, no, they do. They've leaned into it completely. Oh so. uh, yeah, I mean, it's all. They... <laughs> have you seen Paramount? But they have leaned into it. They know their audience. They're catering, catering to their audience, and I'm not mad at them. But I was just like, who the hell was this for? Like, I never heard of either of the actors, <laughs> and like I said, it's like, um, what true lies? Why? You just wanted a name. I mean, you could have literally made a basic. Uh, yeah. Should have made Mister and Mrs. Smith. That would have been more relevant. Yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, because that 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 that's. I the, mean, basically, that's kind of sort of you know. I mean, I mean, it. all these companies pretty much admitted it. It's like it's easier to promote something with a familiar name than just you know come up with this and show then and you ruin the franchise and everybody's mad at you. You've lost your goodwill. So you yeah, know it's. It's um, it's a game you gotta play. Oh, I haven't. Speaking of that, I haven't watched it, but it um, I've heard I've heard people talking about it. Have you, uh, I guess there's a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger biography uh, somewhere which, which on, one? on one of the platforms. I can't remember, but I, it was like a new one. But like a biography? I think so. Yeah, yeah, because like uh, he's actually on there talking. Uh, yeah, I can't. As it's probably Netflix. It's one of the platforms. It might be yeah, Netflix. Is it, is it Arnold? Just Arnold? Because it, it, be. it might be. It might be. It might be. Yeah. That's yeah, the newest know. one, anyway. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I wondered if you saw it. If it was any good or not. Uh, you know, honestly, um, Arnold has been like I didn't really like him in his younger years, but as an old man, post Maria Shriver and um being the governor and stuff, like he's turned it around and he's like actually like a lot more open and like fun to watch. Um, I haven't seen it, but yeah. He, that he it, he does have that TV show though, mm. Fubar, which did make the list. It's on yeah. Netflix. You know, if you don't know what Fubar stands for, Google it. Um, it's a military term, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, I don't know why that exists. I don't know why Stallone has a TV show and then also a reality TV show. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I thought I thought we left that with the Hogans, like and and Brooke having her her crew. I thought I thought we all agreed we weren't gonna try that again. We need the money, gimme, gimme. It's like, babes, there's never going to be another Kardashian unless she wants your child to have a sex tape, and sex tapes are passe now. Well, that's what I was going to say. Are, are we, uh, you and know, Kardashians so, are on the down downswing. So like, it's the, like, like the stuff with uh, Stallone is like, or is it just famous people trying to set up their kids to be the next Kardashian? Tried it, that flop, even though Scott is super hot, he has like the personality of uh, watching get paint dry. Oh, I saw I saw commercials. Wasn't there a show? Wasn't Terry Bradshaw and his family like doing a show or something? I literally wouldn't doubt it. 
I don't know if it went anywhere, but I remember seeing commercials. I was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the Wild West now. Like I said, it's only gonna get worse with the writer strike. Yeah, I, I, especially if you're like you're a famous person and you have like a bunch of like cute daughters or you know that's it seems like that's what they're looking for. Ooh, which reminds me, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, and I ha- but I haven't heard good things about it. Uh, Rob Lowe and his son have a show called Unstable on Netflix. Ooh. It premiered back in March. I have not gotten around to watching it yet, but yeah. Another thing, famous people being famous people pushing their way in. I'm like, oh, now Robert Downey Jr. shows off. Shows up. I'm here for it. If he doesn't, probably not. I mean, he has enough money. I don't think he needs to be there. Well, no, you know. that's his best friend, if you don't know. And they, oh, they Rob. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you were saying uh, Robert Downey Jr. doing his own show. Okay, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I okay. hope he shows up, because they're, they're yeah. friends, and that just would make sense to me. That would, like, make, make the show for me. Oh yeah, that that would be ratings. I'm sure Rob Lowe's begging him to do that. Um, let's see. I think tiny beautiful thing. No. I... Oh, another Paramount Plus flop: Grease, Rise of the Pink Lady. I love. First of all, I love the second Grease more than I love the first one. I am a weirdo whack job. Yes, I know. Wow, you're you're like the first person I've ever heard say that. I think. Well. I love the lead character, right? I'm not mm. talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm talking about the actual lead character. Yeah. I love Peter School Dropout. That is, it's a banger. It's a banger. And it, if you have never seen it live, you're missing out. You know what? You, I, like, when I was in high school, there were so many people, like, boys and girls obsessed with that movie. I could never get into it. I don't know what it is. Well, you put, they're probably theater nerds. Like, if your high school did not put on at least one production of Grease, you didn't them. have a real drama. You didn't have a real drama department. I hate to be the one to tell you. Some of them. I mean, some that of them. Like, Miz, like, you didn't have yeah. a real a real drama production at yeah. your school. I mean, some of them were. Some of them weren't. Uh, but uh, at least the one guy I'm thinking of, he probably just said that. So he was trying to get laid. But, uh... Yeah, I, I literally have never met a guy that actually likes Grease that wasn't yeah. around to see well, 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 knowing the, drive-in. Well, knowing this guy, I yeah, yeah, odds are probably good. He was probably saying it to get laid. Uh... No, like, I, I, don't, I literally don't think I've ever met a man in my life, and I, I know plenty, that have actually ever admitted to liking Grease. Maybe it's just the thing. I'm I'm not that big in the musicals, so that's... I'm not either. But I love Grease. I do. But then, like I said, Grease Two is. I think it's the superior product. I just do. <laughs> like the, so, at least the care the, the the actors are more believable as teenagers. Yeah. Other than John Travolta and Olivia Newton John, f in the chat for our queen. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's what it is. Like it. Like Grease definitively feels seventies pretending to be the fifties. You know. Whereas, mm, yeah. I don't know. It's just something about Grease what? too. It, I like it. I see you happy days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so, Rise of the Pink Ladies, no good. It's not what I really wanted. Well, once again, is it another? It's case a of... prequel too, so it's kind oh. of. Oh, so I was gonna say it's another case of oh hey let's 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 redo this thing from decades ago and make a prequel. Yeah, it's like you know. Although, I mean, sometimes it works. Strange New Worlds. Well, that's, all the, after, all... that's literally after two decades of tinkering and figuring out, um, yeah, they don't like the new stuff. Let's give them the old stuff repackaged. <laughs> Although I was going to say, yeah, so we've, we've had Trek something every decade since. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, since Nemesis, they've literally been trying anything that J.J. Abrams verse. They really thought they had someone with that Calvin time. It's like, no, bitch, we want the original shit. Thank you. Uh, we have spoken. We don't care if the people are 80. We want the original shit. I mean, hell, it's just George Decay and Shatner seeing who's gonna all live who out of spite. No, Chekhov's still alive. Oh, that's true. That is true. He, he's been quiet, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the reasonable one. Uh, I, I, I just, oh, yeah, if it ends up being Shatner, Decay, oh, my God, those two are just gonna be, like... Literally gonna be the betty white and the queen thing which one's gonna bite first they're gonna be they're both gonna be like 115 because there will be t- they just don't hey, want to, you know, you one know to go what? before the other one what did you oh no actually they don't count they said if you were born like after like the year like what was it you're gonna live to be like 140 i think i fall into it hold on let me think it's gonna be the norm I just saw a report on that. Hell, so. just, hell, hell, just for just, just. I mean, if anger and alcohol keep you alive, yeah, you're gonna be immortal. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, no, I have to find it and I'll send it to you. But yeah, it's like if you were born after like, I, like something like 1970, 
four or something like yes! that. You have the potential to like live to be 140. Oh wow! The potential. Yeah. Um, with all the advances in modern medicine and stuff, like because they're they're I think the oldest person in the world, like the his like like is like was like 146 years old or something. Really? So, I thought I I didn't think anyone allegedly got... allegedly. Uh, okay, I, don't really I was gonna say, that, but like allegedly. I didn't think anyone got past the teens or the like no, one. No, the, the one that I know is like 121. So when I saw 40 146, mm. I was like, huh, that that can't be right. You're not a sea turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turtles. I mean. There was a story on our local news. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before? It, uh, some g- guy who like still goes to the gym every day. He's ninety nine years old. Oh, Jack LaLanne, though. There's plenty of those. He's like a, I think he, he might have been a World War II veteran or something. But it's like, yeah, he's like, like he's ninety nine. He's been going to the same gym every day for like thirty years or something. Yeah. Oh, oh, t- oh hey. Speaking of turtles, uh, I find. Did I tell you I got I got Luca on comics? I gave him some of those old Archie comic tur- Ninja Turtles issues. He's been tearing through those. Good for him. Mm. He's, a, he's a he's a young man of fine distinguished taste. I'm proud. Of him. Again, it seems like it, it, my life also this example. If you can find the right thing, you find that gate that right gateway drug. You can get people in the comics. Like for me, it was those Transformers. It was. I was watching the cartoon, you know, it's like six. And it's, it's like my parents are like, oh, hey, here's some comics. I'm like, OK. Then my mom was just like, well, as long as he's reading something. Yeah. Um, my youngest godson hated to read. So what we did was got him car magazines because he loved cars. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what I said. He's got to go to freaking NASCAR school. Really? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you see the, the trailer for that movie? movie uh it's like a um people like the kids training on the video well what video game is that it's like a racing game and it's like based on a true story uh uh, forza horizon um it's oh what is the name of that it's it's based on a true story where like they actually put you know they had a contest and all the best drivers in this certain game they put actually put them in like was it formula one cars or something um is that the name that might have been maybe i don't know but it's coming out soon but it's like that sw- is based on a true story yeah because i swear they keep uh a- anytime i go to the movies anymore you got to see the trailer then you got to see the behind the scenes thing where they're like oh we're, we're, we're making this movie yeah i think it's gran turismo that you're thinking of oh yeah, that's i think that's the only one that i could think that's based on a true story because i don't think forza is or any of the other ones so yeah i think so I don't know. I figured you might be on it because uh, you like co- movies with cars. I, I, yeah. Well, I like movies about family. <laughs> I know. That may yeah. or may not be modern day pirates. Okay. okay? Yeah, it is. yeah, it is. Gran Turismo. I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, that's actually a super interesting uh, story, and the game is actually pretty awesome. Um, and uh, total shade to people who play that game without an actual wheel and pedal setup. Just saying. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. That's. I see that. I, I told Luke, I said, get into some racing games. I see the steering wheel and the pedals. I'm like, we'll teach you how to drive, man. No, yeah, seriously. Oh, speaking of which, the family Stallone, that, that Sylvester Stallone. Oh, Stallone yeah, show, yeah. It's, it's on the list. It, it's not as egregious. I think his family is actually really adorable and relatable. First time I've actually seen that. They actually really seem to love each other. And it just seems like he is getting older and he, um, you know, you know, he's been through a few bankruptcies and stuff and you know, that's why he had to come back to do Rambo and a couple of other things. And so I feel like he's trying to, like, get his family some money. So I can't begrudge him that. Whereas Clint Eastwood totally didn't need to have a show about his family. Sylvester Stallone. more money than God. Sylvester Stallone setting up his children with a reality show. He's like, I don't want you to end up like your uncle. Exactly. Frank. Frank, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that, that, that's what I think it is. Mm-hmm. So I like I can't really begrudge them, and they're so cute. And his daughters are beautiful, so like yeah. Yeah, I, I mean I saw the commercials. Yeah, I mean they that I mean. And like I said, he has another show on, like an actual just like scripted show on Paramount Plus. So that kind of like, just makes sense for me. Like a lot of people love Stallone and want to know more mm-hmm. about him. He had been a private person uh, up until very recently. So oh yeah, it's really cool to get to see it. I saw the commercial for that. I was thinking about checking out. Oh, is he's like an aging gangster or something? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm actually gonna start one. I just got finished with my uh, Star Trek movie. Uh, not minus the J.J. Abrams stuff, like their original stuff. Um, 
So yeah, I'm probably gonna watch that. So yeah, I heard, I heard a few good things about that. So I was thinking about checking that out. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I've been meaning to watch the Jeremy Renner show too. So yeah, I me too. Yeah. So yeah, like I, I can't begrudge them that. But like I said, the family actually seems like they love each other, unlike a lot of the other reality TV show families. So yeah. Nice. Um, but it's still a reality TV show based on a celebrity, so it's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I only have a few more. Let me find the one before I want to talk about the that inspired this list, actually. Oh, my. Uh, where did it go? Oh, I guess I should. Poor Peacock is just taking a hit on this list. And I, 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 I really do like Peacock. I, I think they're just the plucky upstart for sure. I mm-hmm. mean, they really should have left uh, the office on Netflix. They probably would have made more money that way, but not my business. Um, Twisted Metal. Like, this was going to be the show. Hmm. It's based on a, uh, it's based on a, a video game. Um, it's got Will Arnett, Anthony Mackie, hmm. Stephanie Batrice, Thomas Hayden Church. Like, it had. As names. Our cast. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Mackie alone, but then you have Thomas Hayden Church and Will Arnett as the voice of Sweet Tooth, which is like the best character out of the whole se- out of the whole franchise. Everybody knows. It was just really cool. And it, it had ten episodes. I don't think it's getting a season two, but it was just bad. Hmm. It should feel bad. <laughs> It's just not what like fans of racing a uh, racing genre really wanted. Also, Nev Campbell was in there just in case, just just for poops and giggles. Yeah, like, if you really want to know, she was in there, and I'm like, oh, it's, you wish they wouldn't be drunk poor Nev Campbell. Nah. So you said that's based on the game too, right? Yeah, and I it mean, didn't really live up to it, unfortunately. Th- that seems like it'd be a tricky formula too when you're like adapting a video game. It's easy. Like all you have to do is make the cars cool and the characters have chemistry, and they failed. <laughs> miserably and like you know it is a little bit of a storyline underneath twisted metal too that they like it has to be nuanced it can't be mm-hmm. you know hit you in the face and tr- with a or drop an anvil on our head like we're stupid we know we're like pretty sure only the fans of twisted metal watch i don't think they really brought in a big broad audience unfortunately so. i didn't even hear i hadn't even heard of it so yeah well to be fair it comes out at the end of july but i've already seen it so uh, arg me yeah it's okay well, Sony yeah, products have a real that. bad habit of being on the high seas of the internet. So I hope, like, everybody that's been talking about it, they didn't really like it. But hopefully when it gets on the wide release, like, just for the, I think people will like it just for the cast, but I just didn't really care for it. Yeah. So I'll just say that. Um, but oh, it looks God. cool. It's, yeah. it's cool, but it's like, you know, all style and no substance. Mm. So. I mean. <laughs> God, I am turning in the trolley. Yes, you said Anthony Mackey. The first thing I was, the first split second, I was like, Anthony Anderson? <laughs> oh, God. You're getting old, buddy. I was like, I was like, why? <laughs> okay, now let's talk about the worst TV show that aired in 2023 The Idol. Thank you, HBO. Starring uh, Lily Rose Dupp, Johnny, Johnny Dupp's daughter, and uh, The Weeknd, also known as Abel Testify. Um,. Five episodes is supposed to be six, so. Oh, so they there. just cut it early. They're just like, well, yeah. No, they, they didn't. Um, they uh, went ahead. At, my personal opinion is because they had spent so much money uh, before Sam Levinson came in and retweeted that they just really couldn't afford the last episode. And then Sam Levinson is trying to say, oh, no, I just needed five episodes to tell my artistic vision. No, you just ran out of money because you shouldn't have reshot the stuff, personally. Well, too, I mean, if it's bringing in the numbers, I think it, they would find money. So, it, it, you know, the studio would find money somewhere. Well, it's got it's gotten all bad PR. I don't. I haven't seen a single person say they like it. It is uncomfortable. It is just it's it's just gross and it's skeevy. And then to top it all off, it's like a very outdated understanding of how the actual entertainment industry complex works nowadays. I mean, in post TikTok, TikTok changed everything, especially specifically for music artists, right? Like there, the, there's no more gatekeepers in music. You can make your own. You can have a YouTube channel and make your own videos and do this and, and be okay independently. You have Bandcamp where you can literally make your money. You can work directly with Spotify to make your money. You do not need record labels. Yeah. All these skeezy, gross old men. They're a thing of the past. That's a dinosaur model. And so, like, that, the whole premise of the show is just outdated and gross. And I've never really been a fan of Euphoria, so it feels like Euphoria. But for adults, we can get away with more because our characters aren't teenagers. Well, some of them aren't. 
I was gonna say, are they taking liberties because it's easier, or is it, or they are just well, like? Well, just when you, it's kind of like Citizen Kane, right? A lot of people say it's the best movie ever, right? It's like the number one best movie ever. But when he said Rosebud, he was alone, and only the audience heard it. So the whole premise of the story that that man goes on a chase for actually couldn't really happen, right? So like, like you can you can ignore it, but it's there. The biggest plot hole in all of cinematic history. But yeah, everybody just ignores it and says it's the greatest movie. It's what's one like of the, those things. What's like the Raiders of the Lost Ark plot hole where it's like, yeah, if he hadn't shown up, everything just would have worked itself out anyway. <laughs> exactly. So it's just kind of one. Of, and so then to use that model as an excuse for the, the, the extreme like abuse that we see and all these setups, it just, ooh. It's just icky. Hmm. And, and I mean, like, babes, like, you know, that whole, I thought we weren't ever going to mention this with the whole, whole Me Too thing. Like, it's giving Harvey one scene. Like, I, I thought we were moving past that as a society. And, like, Lily, Lily Rose Depp is out there giving it all she's got. But the, the writing and the directing just really failed her. Hmm. Um, it's too it's too much from a male gaze. Like, originally it was from a female gaze. And it was supposed to be about a cult. And it just ended up being this really stupid, like, Joker and a Harley love story at the end of the day. Mm. And it, it's just, it's bad, and, it, and everybody involved, like all the writers, should feel that. Sam Levinson, you should feel that. I hope they don't give you for you season three. <laughs> that man, need, somebody needs to check on his internet history. I don't trust that man. For real, like there, it's it's red flags. <laughs> oh my! Like you're for you. I was like, okay, whatever. Everybody, nobody knows how to write Gen Z. In high school, I I, I get it. It, it. It's it's weird, Z, but like even Zendaya doesn't want to come back to Euphoria, so like really, it, it's a thing. So I think somebody does need to check on Sam Levinson. Hmm. Uh, I this was just very disturbing how bad it was and like what they were doing with the characters. Like every single episode just gets grosser and grosser and more gratuitous, and it's like. Hmm. I didn't know we were still doing Shock TV. I thought we were actually trying to do prestige premiere, like actual stories that mean something. I thought we, I didn't know we were still in 2002. Which I mean, one? With, the, with that movie with Jennifer Lawrence, um, I feel like we're, we're regressing as a, as a society in our entertainment, and I'm scared. I know. I don't oh. want to go back to that. Oh, look, she's going to act weird and get naked. Oh. oh, man. And even they admitted that it, it, it was a movie, like, not meant for 2023 like definitely feels like it was written in the did you see it did you see it is that out yet that jennifer lloyd did you see it no i've been seeing all the press releases for yeah curious. And people have been having a real bad reaction to it too and i was like good you should it's weird and creepy well again it's it's basically prostitution because don't the parents like that kid like pay her to like oh yeah it, yeah can't yeah, take his virginity you know <laughs> I don't yeah. want my boy to be a sissy there, you know. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like we are regressing. Yeah, it, it's it's don't uh, let the Rick DeSantis's win, please. For the love of God, I'll never be able to come back to America. I saw, <laughs> yeah, I, like I've seen the previews for that Jennifer Lawrence movie, and I'm just like, I'm like, like they're doing press and they're getting grilled about it, and it's like, yeah, why did you do this movie? I'm Jennifer like, who Lawrence? greenlit that in 2023? You know, it's we. I'm scared. I'm, I'm like scared for America. I, I'm, I'm like. I'm like, I'm like, did something happen? Am I then my back in 1998? I'm like, I don't. I, I mean, like, as much as like American Beauty was praised, um, guy was lusting after an underage teenager. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, come to true life, it was just underage boys. But still, it's it's weird, and I don't want to go back there anymore. Like that won an Oscar. It, it's just weird. I, I I don't like where we are in society right now. The Idol is the worst thing. Like. HBO prestige at its finest. Like you cancel Westworld for this. What I'd rather have a Game of Thrones season nine written by the freaking people that ruined it in season eight than oh than my. This this show should not exist in in the format that it ended up in. Well, do you think do you think some of these creators are getting desperate because there are so many shows out there now, and you know there's so much background noise. We're never like, gonna get another Golden Age of TV. If we're, it, we're, if yeah, like this. Where where it's like, oh hey, there's so, there's so much out there. We have to make headlines so people check us out. So you know, it's either we have to do something controversial or someone has to get naked but they or don't something. Understand like if it's bad, I'm not gonna give you ratings. I'm gonna hit the high seas of the internet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you and if you do a shocking moment or someone does get naked and it, your show is horrible, people are just gonna check it on the on YouTube, right? Yeah. The the, the scene they want to see, whatever. yeah, something. 
Shout out to TikTok for like doing three minutes at a time with TV shows. Well, I think that's what they said. A lot of those like late night shows, you know, like the Jimmy Fallon's and stuff. It's like if they have like a good bit or something, people aren't staying up to watch that. They're just watching on YouTube the next day. Yeah. Like the industry is like that's what that's just the whole premise. The industry has changed and it's just not like that anymore. I'd have rather had a, a show like, okay, like entourage right that was actually a reflection like they they were actually in touch with what was happening at that particular time in yeah. Hollywood. i love the whole meta commentary but, but there's nothing meta about this it's like yeah i already knew that producers are gross and sleazy i already know that hollywood is sick and twisted okay like i didn't need this like i like the idea of like a cult in hollywood because it makes sense like not necessarily illuminati but like there's been tons of like little small grassroots cults like look at the manson family just I'm just saying, like, that would have been, that that gets entangled with this pop star. Like, that was the better premise. But what they ended up with was basically musical Harley and Joker. Joker. Like, it it, I, it blew my mind that this got greenlit, made, and everybody thought it was okay to put this into the universe. I know. When they first announced that Joker 2 musical thing, I was like, wait a minute. This is a joke, right? I was I like, mean, this- he's probably just an Arkham doped up real good. I was like, this can't be real, right? I'm like, it, it, I'm like Listen, you know, it Stephanie is. Stephanie Giamatta is on the case. Don't worry about it. We got yeah. you. Lady Gaga's got you, Phil. She got you. <laughs> oh, speaking of Hollywood cults, did you see, I guess, Allison Mack finally got out of prison? I think. Why this, you gotta hurt me all the time? Phil? I think it was this week, but I think Allison Mack's out of prison. Like, you know, that's literally why I didn't do the Smallville podcast again i was just like no i can't she's like the best thing about that show so it's like and i wanted an interview and now i'm just like nope can't touch it never gonna talk about never gonna think even think about a smallville podcast now especially since you know um mike and tom are doing their own thing yeah Um, yeah it's just like yeah i literally was like ooh, i wanted to do it and then uh the nexium stuff happened and i'm just like yeah I'll I'll never make I'll never be able to make it happen. But could you sit through an Alice and Mac interview? Because you know that would be numbers. I I don't think so. No, I I, I, I wouldn't want that. I don't I don't want that energy here. She, like, she's she's probably what not. She even, did was terrible. She's so. probably gonna. I mean, if she's smart, she's probably running and hiding anyway. So. Yeah, I hope so. Like, um, maybe she was a victim too. Maybe she wasn't. That's not for me to decide. But like, yeah. I just don't want that <laughs> energy. Like. Ugh. But again, I mean, so, with some of these people, I mean, again, whether you were intentionally evil or not, it's like once you're once you've done your time, don't be out there like giving interviews about the thing and stuff. It's like you know, what, just just go hide, you know. Yeah. Don't be profiting I mean, off of this tragedy. Even I mean, if, like at least Roman Polanski has well, he can't. He'll be arrested. Has a good sense to never come back to America or yeah. even make that many movies anymore. Like he lives a very low profile life as he should. But there's still people in Hollywood who defend him. Well, there's still people that defend Woody Allen. Oh well, yeah, I know because they want well, they want work. It's just, but it's like, is Woody Allen even a big as big a thing as he used to be? I know it's like I can't wait till all the old people who die that made that man a thing, so we can just absolutely roast him and get rid of him once and for all. Yeah, I'm like I'm just like, does Woody Allen still have the cachet he had used oh, to have? Absolutely, didn't like Sarjo did a, a Woody Allen movie, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like uh, that's what I was gonna say. I thought she was one of the ones defending him. I'm like, really? I'm like that. I mean, that's gonna make your careers a Woody. I don't think is Woody Allen making anyone's career these days think so it's like it's a whole we- well and again it's who he knows not necessarily uh, himself, yeah, yeah. that's just kind of how hollywood works if you back a certain person no matter yeah what, you then he introduces the you to somebody else yeah okay that, that, that's just how it works so um you know i i'm just sad that that whole thing made me really sad yeah but yeah i hope she doesn't rear her head and just Maybe she'll go back to Germany because, you know, that's where she was born and, and raised for a little bit. So maybe mm. she'll just go over there and hide out. Maybe. Anyway, yeah, The Idol is definitely by far the worst show. Um, if you've watched it and you like it, that that's on you. That like No judgments. If you like, you like what you like. If any of these shows that I've mentioned have triggered you, I apologize. Hey, hey, we'll talk it next time. If you can defend any of these shows, email us. I mean, we'll have open discussion. You know, send you, tell us why we're wrong about any of these shows. Yeah. Like I said, it's just the most egregious. Like it's just shocking that the show got made in this day and age. Like I, I, I just I feel like we're regressing, and it's really scaring me. Well, again, that like, Jennifer Lawrence movie, you know, it it's just a sign. It's like you know I, the, I, the Supreme I, Court just appealed affirmative action, and 
And then before that, it was Roe versus, like, we are just regressing as a society and nobody's saying anything about it, and it's scaring me. I just think the TV and movie industry are in a bad place where basically it's like, well, how can we make money even if we have to pander to some of the darker corners of society? It's like, well, whatever's going to make us money, let's... let's but let's, the thing let's... is, is that Gen Z and Gen Alpha are so much more sophisticated, and I'll admit it, than millennials everywhere. Were everywhere, like I love a dumb teen rom rom com. I love America. Yeah, I'm yeah, but are they spending the money, or is it all the old people spending the money though? And, and that's something that they need to really realize is that the marketing money, like the eighteen to thirty four marketplace, those kids are broken living with their parents. You need yeah. to cater to the older. Unfortunately, they're they're broken living with their parents because our economy has been in the poop hole forever. <laughs> yep. So I mean, so that's you the have thing. to kind of like, and they haven't ever pivoted away from that model. And like I said, the the it's the, Answers are obvious. They just don't, for some reason, know how to like move forward to break the mold and like just do something different. Yeah, like Thank even you. streaming is not dropping all the episodes at once anymore. They're they're going no. to a weekly schedule, and it's just Be- like oh, I don't really because do because that. people were binging a season and dropping the service until something came back well, on. You and need then to they have would... a service that has more than just one good show at a time. Too. Exactly, that's the whole thing. Exactly. So, I mean, and yeah, Paramount Plus, they were like, well, uh, uh, you know, I, I had, or, well, when it was CBS Access, I originally only got it for um, one show, and that was Evil. And mm. then, like, as their, and, and The Good Wife, and then there was The Good Fight, and then they started spinning stuff off and having, like, the rotation where you, it, it take you longer than a month to watch all the good content, right? Yeah, so, and then Picard, the Picard was showing up, yeah. Yeah. So and like like now I don't have a problem paying for Paramount Plus because it's enough content. So if yeah. they, I mean they they gotta stop working. Like Disney Plus, on the other hand, they're in trouble. They're in bad trouble. Like as a shareholder, I'm telling you, I don't like those investor calls. I hate it. It's I know. Not Rose in the sunshine. Well, I guess they need something else because it's like I mean, except for Mandalorian, none of that Star Wars stuff really hit me. And again, the Marvel well, stuff. We got a, a, Ahsoka coming. So. Yeah, that's true. But uh, again. It, or they got to be afraid of burnout though too, because uh, you know, are people getting burned out on the Marvel stuff? And oh, uh, there's definitely MCU fatigue. I, I don't care what any of the hardcore fans. It, it shows. It shows it, in the, the Ant Man numbers. It shows. You know, it just it shows. yeah. It shows. But again, but again too, that's what's holding it up because Star Wars ain't holding that thing up. Marvel's holding that thing up. It's time to do some original. I'm I'm sorry. It is time to do some original programming, my there friend. You, there you go. Or, it is time. Or or get yourself some more uh, brands. That's what I said. I'm surprised they didn't. Oh, they, up listen, Transformers. Don't empower Disney to get any more. Do you want Skynet to happen? Because when Google buys Disney, yeah, it's over for us. That's but that, Skynet. But that's what I'm saying. If you can't come up with original content of your own, let's go f- out and find more d- different brands. They don't need any more brands. I'm sorry. Mm. I, I can't. I can't let that happen. Or spend some money, get some more creative people in here. Yeah, that's what they need to do. Like I said, original programming. I am tired of IP. I am tired of old 30-year-old IP. I'm over. I need something new and fresh. New and fresh. But again, it's so, you know, there's so much content on there now. It's like, oh, hey, come over here. We have the sixth iteration of this property. Come over here. It's, it's actually starting to be a turnoff for a lot of people. So yeah. It's like, um... The 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 ones like the Gossip Girl reboot, well, uh, pre- sequel failed. The Pretty Little Liars like sequel failed. Like a lot of the stuff is failing, and they keep doing it over and over and over again. And it's like, babes, babes, what are you doing? You and again, crazy? and again, like all you know, the, uh, on uh, I mean, we see on the Star Trek side. Eventually, with all these brands, they had to like- go back to the beginning. Like l- the literal failed pilot is doing better than the other stuff. <laughs> The, the, the show based on the failed pilot, right? The cage is doing the best numbers. Take yep. a hint. Take a mm-hmm. hint. Was it doing better than the We went to Rigel 7, mother... Like, you don't understand. You don't understand. If you're not a Star Trek fan, you don't understand how big that is. <laughs> <laughs> After 60 years, we finally explained that Rigel 7 reference. <laughs> better than Rigel 3, if you know, you know. Hey, <laughs> But again, I mean, again, it's like you have to find something new because eventually all these people from, you know, from your favorite. Uh, like, oh, they didn't proper- like Picard. Well, we're not going to give them anything from Deep Space Nine. Uh, we, we gave Jane Way a good. We made her admiral in the last Nemesis movie. Uh, she doesn't need anything. Let's go. Let, let's go back to the white male captains. And I mean, to be fair, it worked. It worked. 
Uh, but again, why why aren't we doing Deep Space Nine? Again, I, like I said, you could combine the show, you know, make it Deep Space Nine and Voyager, but it's like, you know, you're only going to have these people it, for a certain amount of time. Like they skipped over them. That's all that I'm going to say, and maybe they'll correct it, maybe they won't. I mean, is the stuff in the works? It's late. I mean, we got Captain Seven of Nine, so. Don't remind me. I mean, okay, so it finally hit me, right? So I finally finished all of Picard, and it just hit me as I watched Nemesis, and then I thought about the end of Next Generation. I'm like, wait a minute. They basically just made three seasons of what happened in the middle of, of the last episode of Next Generation. Like, yeah. What? what? Yeah. I it mean, literally I, just hit me. I was just like, oh. <laughs> again, I love the finale of uh, Next Generation, but it was pretty much just another episode. Yeah. A uh, longer one, but just a pretty much another episode. Yeah, like you said, those movies are just, oh, hey, here's here's, here's another season. Here's another season. Yeah, it's like, here's what happened in between. Oh, yeah, Riker and Troy finally got married. That's Suck why it, we need Worf. It. Suck it, Worf. If for you no deserve other... to be miserable. If for no other, well, he was going on to another show. I mean, he... well, I'm, I'm just saying, when he got back. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And again, and that's he killed what... his wife on that show. So, you know. <laughs> Suck it, Worf. You deserve to be True. miserable, even though you've been here since, like, freaking the fourth movie or whatever. <laughs> you've been in more episodes than anyone. <laughs> and more movies, too. So, Well, no, I mean, that's probably not true now with Leonard Nimoy, because he did the Calvin stuff. And Oh, yeah, 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 I don't know. But, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, because the actor was in, uh, what was that? Was it Star Trek? Was it Star Trek Four. 5 or 6? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, as the... Uh, when he's on trial, yeah. Yeah, the lawyer, yeah. So, the yeah. Kling Klingon lawyer. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't really want to cling on to be my lawyer, but that's just me. You know what? I, who I want for a lawyer? I either want a, I either want a Romulan or a Cardassian for oh, my lawyer. A Vulcan. A defense lawyer. A Vulcan, because you know the whole, they'll spend hours reading through all those uh, law books. Come on. Uh, I want a, I want a Romulan because they, if they feel like you, you're in the right, they're gonna fight to the death for you, quite literally. So. Oh please! They lose a the case. They're gonna be shooting people as the disruptor. Come on. Exactly, my kind of lawyer. <laughs> Come on. Listen, I, I still I, I, I am against the Romulan and Vulcan unification. <laughs> Romulans did nothing wrong. F Zurich. I'm just saying. But 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 seriously, I mean uh, uh, talk, speaking of all this Star Trek stuff, uh I don't know what we're doing next episode, but one of the uh, August episodes where we talking about uh, talking to Noel about some next gen. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we'll set that up. Uh favorite episodes. Yes. And rank the seasons, I guess, too. There you right. go. Unless you want that to be a separate episode. No, 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 no. That My episodes be... probably are. We could do that. At least get Noel's ratings. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, do, uh, I mean, we we'll have we have a little bit of time before we record again. So, do you want to do the uh, Kill Kill Bill movies as two episodes? I don't want to do Kill Bill just yet. You gotta wait okay. for the anniversary, so gotta strike while the iron's hot. Nobody's really looking for Kill Bill right now. Okay, okay. All right, so maybe that'll be the next episode. No episode. <laughs> If we can wrangle them. Yeah, that's true. October 10th, 2003. So if you want to shoot for October. Okay. Do the 20th. Okay, yeah. Remind remind me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely do that in October then. All right. So, so enough planning. Um, Give us your ratings. Let us know. So yeah, depending on Noel's schedule, I don't know if that'll be the next episode, but it, we, we'll try to wrangle that for August sometime. So. For an August episode, so yeah, so send us your thoughts. Like again, defend your favorite TV shows if we uh, poo pooed on it. Uh, send all your Star Trek thoughts. Send all your pop culture thoughts. Email us, Capes and Lunatics at no, 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 salty, ah. and, salty and petty sixty nine at gmail.com. I forgot it's, it's your personal branding. branding. It's your personal branding, salty and petty sixty nine at gmail.com. Four twenty would have also been acceptable. Yeah, but I I feel I don't know. 69 just, is the maybe brand. by a hair, sixty nine is more your brand than four twenty. Just wait, just wait. Wolf is like mix them and I got a party. <laughs> All right, so yeah, salty and petty sixty nine at gmail dot com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven six one four three eight two two seven three seven. And of course, find all things capes and lunatics. Find us, find us talking everything we do, uh, episodes, social media, all of it. Uh, the Patreon, please support us on Patreon or pick up merch. Uh, tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's right, it's a whole network. 
I feel it's it in whole, my book. It's a whole network of lunatics. A whole mess of a network. Yes. All right. All right, Little Hellfire. People want to argue about with you about shows. Where can I get a hold of you? Well, friend me on Facebook because I only argue with my friends. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Either do the six or granny. do the nine. What? I said, friend your favorite internet granny. That's right. Find salty herself. It's so salty. Uh, and shut your filthy mouth. You might get that response, but yes. And shut your filthy mouth. I need that on a t-shirt. <laughs> or if you're a young man in his 20s, you might get this response in person. Shut up and just lay there. <laughs> Uh, you know any robots are about to hear that? Shut up and just lay there. <laughs> no, they're going to hear, turn your head and cough. Wow! <laughs> gotta change your oil. Wow! You should gotta check the oil. Hell. <laughs> Whoa! Thank you for joining us. Yes, if you have any secrets to building a uh, life -like, completely lifelike, fully functional sex bot, yes. I need we'll that help. skin. The Borg gave Data. Oh. She blew on it. <laughs> hey oh. Came right then and there. If you're not a 3D printing, a lifelike sex robot, little Felpar needs to talk to you. We can go have these. 